Hello everyone, this is a Rainbow Rapid Fire Range Rogue build in Diablo 4 Season 1. In this video, I'll be doing the Tier 4 Capstone Dungeon while I was at level 62. I will be going through the skills and the skill synergies, the gear, and a quick mention about the gear that I use here, it really wasn't optimized at all. And finally, the Paragon board path that I took up to the level where I am. I will also be including a link in the video description to the build planner as well as timestamps to the different sections of this video. First off, in terms of the active skills that I use, since this is a rainbow rogue, obviously I'll be using all three imbues, which is cold imbue, poison imbue, and shadow imbue. This is also used in conjunction with the newly released Val Apothecary Raffle Heart which gives you a flat 15% chance to proc all three imbues on a regular attack. Since I've invested skill points in all three imbuement skills as well as their modifiers, the free procs from the Vile Apothecary Heart will also benefit from those. With regards to the three imbuement skills, typically what you want to do is start off with Cold Imbue to land the CC and hopefully freeze, followed up by the Poison Imbue because the Poison Imbue also combines with the Noxious Heart legendary aspect and I'll cover more into that in the gear section. And finally, you want to use Shadow Imbue last. Firstly, because by that point in time, you may be running a little bit lower in energy and the Shadow Imbue will be able to replenish energy per monster kill. The Shadow Imbue will also trigger Icy Alchemist as well and that is another of the legendary aspects that I'll cover later on. That being said, you don't really need to strictly follow this order because as you can see, I also have the Penitent Greaves equipped, so most enemies will by default already be chilled. If your imbuement skills are on cooldown, it is really fine just hitting any of the imbuement skills that's currently up. In terms of the primary attack, I'm using Rapid Fire, and there is no basic skill, Rapid Fire is the skill of choice here because it actually is able to self-sustain, particularly if you can land the vulnerable status on the enemies. In addition, Rapid Fire has a very fast attack speed, and the faster the attack speed, the higher the chance to proc lucky hits, as well as importantly, the Val Apothecary as well. The fourth skill other than the imbues that I use is Concealment. Consumment is there for a few reasons. Firstly, it is an important source of unstoppable to prevent crowd control. In addition, Consumment also lands the vulnerable status on enemies that you attack as you exit stealth. And importantly, it also has the ability to replenish 40 energy. So you can also use it sort of like a battery button in a very rare event where you find yourself running low on energy. It is also the emergency mobility skill where you know if you find yourself cornered and you need to get out of a, sticky, of a sticky situation, using consumer allows you to just walk past anything and reposition yourself in the fight. Finally, in terms of ultimate, I'm not actually using Rain of Arrows. I am using Shadow Clone instead. And I must say Shadow Clone is extremely strong with this build. With the Shadow Clone, I'm using the aspect of Imitated Imbuement. This aspect allows your Shadow Clone to also apply the Imbuement skill every time you hit the Imbuement button. This is a very strong, very strong nuke because I'm also using the Preparation Specialization which allows you to reduce your ultimate skill cooldown by 5 seconds every time you spend 100 energy. Since this build uses Rapid Fire with a very high attack speed, the 100 energy spend is actually pretty quick. And in essence, although the default cooldown for the Shadow Clone is 60 seconds, in reality, as long as you're attacking enemies, it's roughly about 20 to 30 seconds. And this is at a point where I do not have any cooldown reduction on my gear whatsoever. If you want to see how strong the Shadow Clone is, you can also skip ahead to the end of the video where I take on the boss of the Capstone Dungeon with the Shadow Clone. If you pick up the Shadow Clone modifier as well as have a max roll aspect of Imitated Imbuement, your Shadow Clone essentially doubles your DPS while it's in the field, plus having all the effects of the Imbuement really stacks on top of each other, 
allowing you fantastic crowd control and poison and shadow application. Because I'm using preparations specialization, anytime you hit shadow clone, it also resets every single cooldown you have. And this prepares you to use all three imbuement once more in conjunction with the active shadow clone for massive damage. Using shadow clone also grants you 5 seconds of unstoppable. So this build actually has two different skills that provide unstoppable, making crowd control a non-issue. Not to mention that of course using shadow clone will also reset the cooldown of concealment. So in the very rare event that you actually get stunned again or frozen or anything else, you can also just hit concealment once more. Moving on to gear, and this build does have a few different requirements. Not a lot, but what I'll do is I'll split this section into what I refer to as the core equipment and items, and then the complementary equipment. I highly recommend to start this build only above level 50, and to use one of the other builds such as Twisting Blitz or Flurry to level from 1 to 50, because at very low levels, you run into issues of energy sustain with rapid fire, as well as of course not being able to have access to quite a number of the legendary aspects. As you level to level 50, obviously keep, a, keep an eye out on some of the legendary aspects so that you can quickly make the shift once you hit the low 50s. So in terms of core, first thing I want to mention is the two legendary aspects that synergize with imbuement skills, which is the Noxious Eyes as well as Icy Alchemist. Noxious Eyes allows you to further chill any enemy anytime you hit a chill enemy with poison imbuement. And since you're using Penitent, Greaves, as well as Cold Imbuement, enemies by default should be already chilled, making your poison imbuement having extra utility on top of dealing the poison damage. I see Alchemist is very good because it improves the AoE capabilities of this build. It has a lucky hit, 75% chance that when you use a shadow imbued on a chill enemy, you create additional IC explosions that further chill enemies as well as their surrounding targets. The combination of both of these aspects allow you to further spread the chill application as well as of course even increase the chill potency, eventually leading to frozen targets. Next up would be the aspect of imitated imbuement. This aspect does increase the damage of your Shadow Clone, but more importantly, it allows your Shadow Clone to also apply Imbuement to its skills anytime you hit the Imbuement button. Because I'm using the Preparation Specialization, anytime you hit Shadow Clone, you will also instantly reset the cooldowns of all your Imbuement skills, giving you the opportunity to quickly use all three Imbuements while the Shadow Clone is up for massive utility and damage. I'm only using a Min Rope aspect here because that's all I could find when I put the build together, but assuming you get a max road aspect for a 16% boost to Shadow Clone, and you combine this with the modifier in your skill tree that gives another plus 20%, your Shadow Clone essentially doubles your DPS as long as it is up. With the preparation specialization, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the cooldown of the Shadow Clone is also greatly reduced because anytime you spend 100 energy with rapid fire, which is extremely quickly, you will further reduce the cooldown by 5 seconds. Lastly, in terms of the core equipment is the newly released Malignant Heart, the Val Apothecary. This is a Redful Heart, and it gives your character a flat 15% chance that is not dependent on Lucky Hit to release all 3 imbuements at once on a regular attack. And you can imagine with a fast attacking skill such as Rapid Fire and Attack Speed modifiers, you really proc this very often leading to additional application of all three, chill, poison, and shadow. The last one in the core setup I think you can potentially do without, but I would highly recommend to slap it on if you have it, and that would be the Penitent Greaves. The role on the Greaves doesn't really matter too much, what you really use it for is the chill application. With the Penitent Greaves, the enemies are by default chilled, which means that anytime you use Poison Imbue or Shadow Imbue, you will be most definitely proccing both the Noxious Eyes as well as the Icy Alchemist aspect, making it very easy to get all the additional effects without relying too much on Cold Imbuement. In terms of the complementary equipment, 
on the defensive side, we have the bread and butter disobedience aspect as well as the umbrella aspect. The combination of both these aspects help to greatly improve survivability. And with the case of the umbrella aspect, it should be no problem maintaining 5 stacks of the dust route almost all the time. Because firstly, this is more or less a ranged build. And secondly, you have a very high attacking speed with rapid fire, making it easy to generate the dust routes. The third defensive component of this build would be the Mangler's Aspect. This aspect allows you to apply the Daze crowd control effect anytime you hit a vulnerable enemy. So if you combine this with the Exploit Aspect, as well as other ways to apply vulnerability in this build, which is the Lucky Hit from the Coal Imbue, or the attacks when you come in, when you come out from concealment, or the explosions from the shadow imbue, you will apply dazed, and this is pretty useful because not only can of course the enemies stop attacking you when they are dazed, but you can also spec into the rogue talent that helps you to knock down when you daze an enemy. This is pretty useful when you are playing a ranged build because obviously you don't really want too many enemies coming close to you. So having the ability to daze enemies as well as knock them down gives you plenty of breathing room. Moving on to the complementary offensive aspects. First off will of course be the aspect of repeating, which is a no-brainer if you're using rapid fire. You can make this build work without it, which is why I call this a complementary rather than a core aspect. But it does help a lot because the additional branch off from rapid fire helps to proc all the additional effects as well as apply the imbuement effects that you have. On the ranged weapon, and here quick mention I am using a bow because bows have a much higher attack speed than crossbows. I have an accelerating aspect on the ranged weapon and that actually doubles the attack speed bonus and if you get a max roll accelerating aspect you can get a massive plus 50% attack speed boost when you land a critical hit which is almost always all the time. When you first spec into this build, you may run into energy sustain issues, in which case then I would recommend not using either the bow or not using the accelerating aspect yet, and you can save it in your stash until you become more comfortable with the energy sustain before slapping them on. A vast majority of the energy sustain issues really go away the moment you get the exploit glyph as well as the exploit glyph modifier which lends the vulnerable status because the rapid fire skill will provide you a lot of energy refund if you use it on a vulnerable target. But I'll cover that more when I head into the paragon bots. Next up would be the aspect of bursting venoms. This is a very handy aspect to have because firstly it of course increases the damage that you have because it allows your poison imbuement skills to have a chance of creating a toxic pool underneath the targets. Beyond that, if you get lucky and you know you get a toxic pool that is very close to your position, you can quickly head into it to get free Im poison imbuement skills. And this combines very well with the fact that later on in the Paragon bots, you can head into the Eldritch Bounty to get the rare node that allows you to get a 0.5 second cooldown reduction anytime you hit an imbuement skill. So essentially, spamming the Poison Imbue will also help reset both your Coal and Shadow Imbuement skills. Finally, we have Aspect of Corruption, which I think is another no-brainer. You can probably do without it at the start, but it does make a noticeable difference, especially considering that you get the Imbuement skill effects on your Shadow Clone as well as the Val Apothecary as well. And if you get a max roll one, this means that the procs from your Val Apothecary is essentially full potency imbued effects. One special mention to another of the Malignant Heart, which is I think is complimentary, but that is the Clipshot Malignant Heart. This allows your rapid fire to apply knockback, making it much more difficult for the enemies to reach you. You don't really see a lot of that in this run because I unfortunately have a very low roll one. If you get a max roll one, you have like a 40% chance to knock back enemies, making it very safe and range build. I am already near the end of the run, so just before I head into the boss, quick mention about the Paragon bots. You can refer to the link again in the video description to see the bots, but you want to 
get the combat glyph at your starting board and then the expert glyph on the second board which would be the cunning stratagem this allows you to quickly get both of these effects which allows energy sustain very early in this build from there head into the Eldritch bounty to get a lot of synergies with the imbuement skills moving on to the fight here you can really see that the boss melted pretty quickly I did have to spend a little bit more time maneuvering out of the fire and killing the adds but essentially the boss dies pretty quickly from the shadow clone and poison imbuement. Before ending this video, I'll quickly go over the equipment that I have, which is really not very optimized at all. Thanks for watching.